So firstly, I'd like to do the traditional thing, thanking the bridesmaids, thanking the best men, thanking the wedding party, uh, kind of for all their hard work. And I'd like to make that official by doing a toast to them. So to the wedding party. Thank you, I'm going to be drinking during the speech. Um, <clears throat> I'd also like to thank our families as well for the support both during the planning of the wedding, uh, but also during, kind of during the whole time that Pippa and I have been together. We've, we've had an emo enormous amount of support from both Andy, my dad, from our families as, during the time of our relationship, and it's been really great. Um, I'd like to say, speaking of my family, there are two members of my family that have unfortunately passed away since Pippa and I have been together. Uh, they both met and loved Pippa very much. They were my aunt Gillian, and my grandfather. So I'd like to pause in the celebrations and ask everyone to pay their respects by raising a glass to those that are no longer with us. To those that are no longer with us. I think Mike and I complement each other in lots of other ways, but I'll stop the comparisons there. I'll just say that I'm really glad I found you, and I love you very much. So this is a bit of a surprise for everyone. Uh, some people that Pippa would have told over the years since we've been engaged will have pointed out that I never technically <laughs> proposed. <laughs> she found a ring that she wanted, said could she get it, I said yes, and then she asked are we engaged, my response was yes, and that was the last we ever did of it. So, to stop her from bringing it up every time we see or hear of everyone getting engaged, I wanted to do this. And what is hopefully the easiest <laughs> question ever. <laughs> Philippa Caroline Stanley, will you marry me? <laughs> I'm, I don't know which finger to put it on. Let's I put will. it on that one. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised. <laughs> I'm in awe. <laughs> I'm in awe of the bond that they have and of the individuals that they've become together. I don't get it. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> what Pippa saw in a bald old bloke <laughs> who liked to dress up as a soldier run around the woods shooting at children. <laughs> but I am glad that he did somehow manage to woo her. I'm blessed to have the pair of them in my life. They bring me so much joy and support. Especially Pippa's obsession with throwing savoury food out of the windows of moving vehicles and Mike's begrudging tolerance of Pippa throwing savoury food out of the windows of moving vehicles. Pippa, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. And as a symbol. And as a symbol. Of my love. Of my love. And my commitment. And my commitment. Please wear this ring. 
please wear this ring. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to repeat that? No, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't mind how much money. No, it's fine. It's good. Please wear this ring. No, I can't stop doing that. <laughs> Please wear this ring. With love. With pride. And with happiness. Mike, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. And as a symbol. And as a symbol. Of my love. Of my love. And my commitment. And my commitment. Please wear this ring. Please wear this ring. With love. With love. With pride. With pride. And with happiness. And with happiness. Shinny. <laughs> <laughs> There is also another charge, I'm afraid, Mike, goes towards your attempt to be sophisticated. And it was a poor attempt at best. I am partially to blame for this, I will concede. My attempt to make you more of a gentleman, I had a dinner party at my house. I had a dinner party at my house. I had a dinner party at my house. And I, I pulled out all of the stops. There were a number of us there. We were suitably attired. I'd prepared a suitable meal and we had suitable drinks. But much as you might expect, suitable drinks soon became unsuitable drinks as the evening wore on. I seem to recall uh, black absinthe was involved, which is always a mistake. Don't anybody tell you it's a good idea. It's a bad idea. But Mike found the port and enjoyed the port. Enjoyed all of the port. <laughs> this would have been fine had the carpets in my house not been cream. <laughs> I think it's in my expert opinion that these poor qualities are offset by his loyalty, his reliability, and being one of the nice, most genuine people I have had the pleasure of representing. Pippa, a vision of beauty on your wedding day, you're the most deserving per per person of the sentence of being Mike's wife. He deserves someone as truly as lovely and as laid back as you, and may you treat him with the same reverence as he holds for you. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I think we can safely say that they are guilty of being a lovely couple, deserved of each other, and two people that I'm delighted to call my friends. Wishing you the very best from all of us. Please raise your glasses to the bride and groom. But anyway, apart from training squirrels in St. James's Park to beg, she was very good. she's always been very good on vermin, squirrels and pigeons, and other lost souls. She um, befriended a homeless guy who used to sit outside Piccadilly Circus. She used to top him up with money for a hostel, which was really generous of her. I think actually I was giving the money to, in turn, so it was more a sort of redistribution of my money. But still, the thought, <laughs> thought was there. They did start paying her in the end. And word got around, and I think in the end there were about three homeless guys who used to wait for at Piccadilly Circus because they'd heard there was this pretty girl that talked to homeless people. Like, I'm totally proud of having a daughter who talks to homeless people. So now I can, you know, pass the jackboot of the patriarchy to Mike. <laughs> very, very happily. Um, they are really good together. I, I know when I first met him, I knew everything was superb because he gave me a Iron Maiden calendar. So 
that's sorted it all. So that's pretty much it from me. So I think I'm supposed to propose a toast to Pippa and Mike and anyone else who needs toasting. <laughs> Cheers, Pippa and Mike. In those early days, Mike was a very good sport too. As an example, he happened to mention to our team at work that he'd seen Twilight more than once. <laughs> Which I think he instantly regretted telling us. Apparently an ex-girlfriend made him watch it. But it became an ongoing joke that he was a hardcore Edward fan and for his birthday, I decorated his desk at work with balloons and posters of Edward that said, Team Edward, because Jacob doesn't sparkle. <laughs> Which he loved. One of the things I love most about Mike is how much he cares about people. He loves his family, and he's always there when they need him. He cares about his friends, and that's evidenced by just how many he has. Too many, if you ask me. I don't know how he makes time for all of you. <laughs> but I think, I always think you can tell the kind of person someone is by the type of friends they keep. <laughs> Aside from Smirnoff. <laughs> There's always an exception to the rule. Um, all of Mike's various groups of friends made me feel instantly welcome and part of the group. You're all lovely, so thank you. Another thing I love about Mike is that he's utterly determined to make me happy. He always puts me first in any decision, even when I ask him not to and to consider what he wants. <laughs> but that's just the kind of person that he is. At first glance, this grumpy, stubborn man seems, <laughs> seems to be one thing. <laughs> but he's completely different under the surface. He sings loudly while he does the washing up. He stays up all night hand feeding our pet rabbits when they aren't well. <laughs> he brings me chocolate when I wake up in the middle of the night feeling snacky. He pretends to find my jokes funny. He dances when he walks ahead of me up the stairs. And he feeds an endless array of wildlife, squirrels, birds, foxes and hedgehogs every single day because he knows it makes me happy. So if you could raise a glass to my new husband, Mike. Uh, and I'd really want to spend some time talking about two very key uh, important days in my life. Uh, the first one being the day that I met Pippa, and the second being the day that I knew, within, with, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I wanted to marry her. So uh, I would ask you to cast your mind backs, mind, minds back uh, almost eight years to a considerably fresher face, Mike, who still had hair. <laughs> uh, shush, shut, no. Wait till the end, wait. Uh, so yeah, so I started my first day at Towers Watson. So uh, I'd probably been in the office for about 15 minutes and I kind of looked up, it was a long open plan office. I just gazed down, cast my eye down the office and I was literally um, stopped dead in my tracks and my train of thought by seeing this just stunning woman uh, probably 50 foot away from me uh, and I still remember and it's still in my head the image of her in her dark blue dress with a white collar just further down the office it lives with me pretty much every day uh, and it's just burned into my soul uh, but I thought <laughs> but anyway it was my first day I looked back down at my computer and I was like no nope, get focused don't do anything uh, so uh, about an hour later I get a tap on the shoulder and it's the woman in the blue dress Hi, I'm Pippa I'm going to take you to get your security pass photo um, My response was only what I can describe of a gahoff of incoherent words as I <laughs> stuttered my way through a response but my professional head kicked in what little of there is and I said nope don't do it. She's down the other end of the office. You're never going to talk to her on a regular basis. Don't worry about it. You piss poorly managed to make a good impression. It's just awful. And I just thought, fine, get on with it. So I sat back down and Mary, who I used to sit next to, went, oh, I see you met Pippa. She's joining our team next week and she's going to be sat opposite you. 
we, we had tickets to go see Florence and the Machine at the O2, uh, purchased with Andy and Jane. Um, now, Pippa is a huge Florence and the Machine fan. So much so, it's the only thing we listened to for six months in, in the car before the concert. So, you know, I know Florence and the Machine now. <laughs> so we got through the evening. We left the O2. Um, Pippa didn't really feel like going through a heavily crowded underground. So she, she kind of asked, can we get a taxi? I said yes, and we jumped in the taxi to London Bridge. So the taxi pulls up at London Bridge. We jump out, and me being me, liking plans, I charged straight into London Bridge. I looked at the, the train board. I was trying to work out which train will get us home quickest with wit connection, like that, because I hate London and I just want to get out of there. Um, <laughs> boys, boys know it's true. Um, but I turn round. Pippa's not there. She's not standing next to me. I turn further around. She's not in London Bridge Station at all. So, of course, I start panicking a little bit. Wander out. Um, and I found Pippa stopped talking to a homeless person deep in conversation, asking them how their evening was, how they had been, if there was anything she could do, if there was anything she could get for them, a hot meal, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, anything like that. And for me, I was just in awe that going through this absolutely hellish day, and it really was a hellish day, deep down all she wanted to do was get home. She was still stopping to talk to someone that she felt was less fortunate than, than her. Uh, it wasn't even something that would cross my mind at all. And it was the first thought that was on her mind. So in that moment, I knew, without a shadow of a doubt, this is the person that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And as other people have said, it's really what makes us work, is the difference of approaches. We have very similar, very similar and different habits and views. And we often have different approaches to things in life. And, you know, either one of them would obviously be the right way, mine. Uh, <laughs> we generally meet in the middle and it works, mine. Mike, 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 yeah. Go for it, boys. Um, for the person with me for the rest of my life, ladies and gentlemen, Philippa Stanley Farrow, the bride, my wife, to the bride. Over the years, I've watched the both of them grow together and as individuals and adapt to the growth in each other. I've seen them cling together through dark times, finding their own strength and a shared strength that is greater than either of them alone. I've seen them forge a bond that is mightier than all the crap that the world can throw at them. And still they have the same spark the same vulnerability and protectiveness that's been there from the start. Pippa will always throw toast for the birds, and Mike will always love her for it.